Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 35, WebSockets Clients, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about WebSocket servers. So as we spoke in the previous episode about the servers, we want to also have a client that can talk to our server. And this we can also implement in Python and Rust. But the most common implementation will probably be in uh, JavaScript. So this will be the one I will show first, the one that will run in a browser. But uh, for Python, we will be using the WebSockets library that is out there to create the client. And in Rust, we have uh, Tungstenite. And I will be showing you the Tokyo uh, Tungstenite variant of that to use an async client. All right, let's hop over to the code. As I said, on the left, we start with uh, the JavaScript client that I showed you at the end of the episode for the WebSocket uh, servers. So what you do in JavaScript uh, is you probably want to set up your elements that you want to dynamically change with the text that is coming in and out of our chat. And here you set up uh, your WebSocket uh, connection. Once you have this instance, the WebSocket, you can then use different event handlers. So for example, on open and handle the connection opening. Then you have another handler called on message. So that's when a new message comes in on the WebSocket and uh, you get to handle this with your closure. And we also implement on close. So when the WebSocket disconnects and on uh, click, uh, you can see down here is the button that you will use to send a message, which will then use, as you can see here, the send method of the WebSocket client. So in JavaScript, this is also all very straightforward and easy to use. You don't have to, you don't have to make sure that uh, your async task handler is running and uh, you don't have to code anything up in this way. It is basically pre-prepared for you. So that small block of code is a full on WebSocket client in JavaScript. Let's hop over to the Python code. All right, so for the Python client, we will be using async.io. And because our Rust client will also be async, we will use the WebSockets uh, library to handle the WebSockets. And uh, since is needed, this is a command line or terminal based WebSockets client. And to have interactivity, we will need the sys library to read from uh, standard in. And that's already the first function that is implemented in async. We can read from standard in one line. All we have to do is uh, get an event loop. And then we have the read line function that will be run in an executor by our async IO event loop. So this will be a separate task that is running. And then we can uh, create our extra task that will now read from standard in and send this stuff to a WebSocket. We will hand this our WebSocket instance. So this is an infinite loop that reads the new line that we have uh, typed into standard in. Once it has the line, it uh, sends it off to the WebSocket. And in order to quit our client, we write the special command slash exit. This will break this loop and therefore we will stop this uh, task. So the next function is a wrapper that will help us get a new message. So it will either be the next message that was received from the, on the WebSocket, or it will be none if there was an exception raised. This will help us uh, later down the line when we want to provide the standard in reading of us typing a new message and in parallel also handle new web me uh, socket messages coming in. So how did we, how did I implement the main uh, loop. Let's jump down a bit in the code to show the main loop. So what we do is, this is our default uh, URL for our WebSocket uh, chat. We will connect to it. Once we've done it, we can uh, show the user on the terminal that we have uh, successfully connected. And once we've done that, we uh, create our task that does the standard in to WebSocket forwarding. So once we have typed a line, this will be handed over to the WebSocket and sent to the server. And uh, this one is uh, the other way around. So we will wait for the next message to come in. And therefore we have two tasks that run. 
Now we run those uh, two tasks in parallel and we only do that until the first of the two has completed. This uh, is the same as the select often used in other async implementations and it's also called like that in Tokio, for example, you can see down here in the Rust code. So once we have that, we get our uh, done tasks responses and we get the first response because we waited for the first, we know we only want to handle the first message. And this is what we print out to the users and then our loop, infinite loop continues. Unless we don't get a result back, then we break the loop and the client stops working. This works fine when we, for example, treat the slash exit handler. It will not provide a full message, it will provide a none. And then this result will be none and we break the loop, therefore exiting our client. And here's just the main event loop set up for our main reader. Let's switch back up to the code to have a comparison and go over our code in uh, Rust. So we will build the same thing. We will have our standard in being read and uh, forwarded to a WebSocket as a method. We will have a line read in at standard in and forward that to the WebSocket server. And in order to do that, we will use from uh, futures, the traits for the sync and the stream extension. Then we'll use the async uh, buffer reader extension from uh, Tokyo IO. And uh, of course, a uh, multi-purpose user single consumer channel to forward the things between our standard in and the WebSockets. And from Tungstenite, we will connect to the WebSocket and uh, we will only handle messages for WebSockets. So then we also use the protocol from the Tungstenite base. Same thing as on the left, we have first our chat URL. We connect to the chat URL. Here we then get our WebSocket uh, stream. We also tell the user that they have successfully connected. Here we set up our MPSC. We will uh, have uh, strings and uh, the length of the queue will be only 10. Since we have the select loop, we will only have one message actually going in and out of this channel, but safety first, so we are used uh, 10. The standard in loop is implemented as a closure in uh, Rust and it will also be async and we will move the variables from the outer scope into the closure. We also have an infinite uh, loop. We have to create, provide a buffer for the line that we are typing. Here we can use the Tokyo's uh, buff reader, make a new instance and uh, pass the Tokyo standard in. So they already created for us an async uh, standard in reader, which is uh, actually non-trivial in Rust. But luckily this is provided for us. This way we can use this uh, buffered standard in, use the read line method, pass our buffer. So the one that we set up up here, await it. So, and once our buffer is filled with the stuff that we typed in to our terminal, we can then send it off to the MPSC channel. So as you can see up here, the TX standard in is the sender of our channel. This gets handed the line, we uh, trim the white space, make a string out of it and send it off. String is needed because the data type of our channel is a string. Same thing, if uh, somebody types uh, slash exit, we uh, break the loop and therefore this uh, closure stops running. We have the task spawned with our closure. So that's the same thing as we do uh, here with the create uh, task. Oh, sorry, actually this line. Let's continue further down in uh, the Rust code. So here we have our main loop. Again, we have the spawned task to read from standard in. Then we create an infinite loop that now selects between either receiving a new message on the WebSocket stream. When we get a new message on the WebSocket stream, what we do is we um, handle if this message is a useful message, so a sum, or if it is a none, this is an option coming back. If there is no message, uh, we break 
our infinite loop because uh, there's something that went wrong with the stream. It should at next always give you a message. Afterwards, we check the message type. So if we received successfully a message, it will be a result of OK. We have the message. We can match this message now. And it can be of type a binary text, ping pong, and a close. So these are the WebSocket messages that exist. Here, I make sure to implement all variants and make sure that if somebody sends off a binary, our client doesn't die. It will simply let us know that uh, there's binary stuff that came in. And if it is text, it will simply print the text out. If this is an error, this could happen, right? If uh, the server goes away, for example, then we will print uh, this out and also break our client connection. And the second uh, select we are running is our standard in. So that's the same as this async out standard wait where we have the twos here. So this select is then checking if we have a new message that was typed on standard in. And once we have that message, we can use the WebSocket stream to send it directly in the message text format. And this is a string, so this is the correct data type already. Another thing worth mentioning on this uh, standard in message handling is this Rx is actually the receiving part of our MPC channel. So the Rx next gets the next message off the channel. The channel will be fed, if you remember, from the, uh, the standard in loop with the messages that you typed with uh, the read line. This way we make sure that we always read from the standard in and only pass successful data onto the queue. And here we can completely separately handle only messages being passed on this queue. Using uh, message passing queues is very helpful in general when you write uh, multi-threading or asynchronous code. If you remember, we already used those MPC channels also inside the server. Further down, we have some uh, more handling of what happens when we uh, close the connection. So this is automatically done for you in uh, the Python and the JavaScript implementation. But actually, in order to gracefully close a web socket connection, so if uh, you type a slash exit, this will happen. We will try to send off the web socket uh, close message. And then we await the acknowledgement of the server. And once we've done that, we can basically double check that the stream is uh, closed right here. And once this is done, we have uh, gracefully closed the WebSocket connection and we are being a nice client. Let's quickly uh, run the client, maybe in, uh, in a different window setup. So I will prepare uh, that. And afterwards we will discuss a major issue with the client because it is uh, not something that you probably want to deploy in uh, real life. I prepared the clients to run in parallel on multiple terminals. So let's see if uh, they actually work. Let's hop over to our clients running. At the top, you can see I'm running our uh, warp WebSocket uh, server web server mix. I already connected the new users and disconnected some. Here you can see I'm running our WebSocket client in uh, Rust and uh, user 2 send uh, an exit so he uh, quit. And here we have our Python client running and uh, bottom here again our Rust thingy. So if I now type a message, uh, hello bedroom uh, builds, for example, it will be showing up at the others with the user ID. And this will be a good copy. And uh, this is user 4 that connected last as well. If I now type it in another connection, so if I would hop up to our Python implementation, I can just go hello Python and it will show up. If I now type exit, we will see that um, user three has exited, user three sent the message exit even, <laughs> and we can have then also, for example, disconnect the bottom user, so we will type uh, this here. Now we have exited on this one. Now we can see that the client number three here is uh, still connected. 
And what we'll do now is we will uh, kill our server. Let's do that. We will stop the server. And here we can see that this is handled gracefully as well. We know server went away and we cannot send uh, the server close message to have the graceful shutdown of our WebSocket connection. Now let's go to the problem that I mentioned before. If we were to run this in uh, real life, we have a big problem with this um, Tokyo Select or with the AsyncIO first uh, completed. Because if you are connected to a chat room that is very, very active, this will interrupt you while you're typing your message into standard in because the first task that is finished wins, right? So if WebSocket receives a new message because one of the other users sent a message, while you will be typing, the task that does your standard in handling will be stopped as well. The message will be handled, printed out to standard out, and then you go back to handling the standard in. There are many ways to uh, fix this uh, problem and you can discuss those in the comments down below. But anyways, this is not a viable solution as a terminal client for out there, but it will show you in general still how to implement a WebSocket client that runs on a terminal, which can be useful to implement, for example, a chat bot, or if you already have a web server that is doing remote controllable things, you might want to automate them with a cron job or stuff like that. So you can keep your WebSocket as the communication protocol and use your command line based client as the trigger. I hope this short introduction into WebSocket clients was kind of useful. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be bitmap images.